Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of Garage Studio Modelers. I'm Dave Forrest and I'm here with my good friend, Harvey Lowe. And in today's episode, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the next modeling project. So here we have the Stug, which is we just finished off in the last episode. Uh, we'll get some close-up pics of this so that uh, everybody can see the entire model. I did, a, I added a few things since uh, since we last saw each other, uh, just like the machine gun and whatnot. But you'll get close-ups of that. Robert will take care of that for us. Uh, and then uh, going on to the the, the tiger. Um, so oddly enough, I have maybe oh twenty-five tiger kits yeah. in my vast collection. A lot of them are, are right here. Um, I've never built a tiger. Before. And now you have. It's my first yeah. tiger. My first tiger. But, but <clears throat> you've cobbled this together from various Yes, this kits, is the so. old Tamiya kit. Oh. Uh, not the old, old Tamiya kit, but the one that was released in the late 80s, 89. Is that the one with the autocarious version? Like yes. Yeah, 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 it kind yeah, of came yeah, out around yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah. So there's the, it started, they started off with an early, mm. and then they went to a mid and a late. So this is the early tiger, uh, and it has a ton of aftermarket on it. Um, and that's the nice thing about the old Tamiya kits is that you can find, like in my own collection, I, like I had stuff in my collection that I forgot I had. So as I was rummaging well, through everything, I found like I found an old Edward set, I found an old Edward barrel. Uh, let, let's be blunt. What you do is you buy stuff for a tiger and you put it in your Panther kit or your Chiha kit. And like what I do is I put the aftermarket parts with the kit. Well, you know, when you're at a show, when you grab uh, stuff, and you're sure, throwing yeah. stuff in there, you know, you kind of, maybe you forget. But it's a nice it uh, cereal box surprise. It is. It's like, like Christmas what I morning found. every time. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, yeah, yeah, so a ton of, and not only did I, did I use aftermarket, but I also did some kit bashing, mm. uh, where I took some, like the, all of the FIFO air filter stuff is from Ryfield models. Oh, nice. Right, because nice. there just wasn't enough detail mm. on the, and the, 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 the Tamiya one's a little bit rough and a little mm. bit inaccurate. Um, so that's your work in progress. So that's my work in progress. So you can see it here. It's it's modulated. It's uh, it's going to be a, a Kursk Tolkenkov uh, Tiger. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just got. I just got to put some uh, green modeling on it, or green camel on it, and then it'll be ready for uh, for decals and or decals and uh, nice weathering and whatnot. Nice. But for today, we're going to focus on road wheels, um, and specifically, and and I think that the Tiger is a great subject to do road wheels because they're a little bit larger there's a lot of them yeah um there's like there's like 48 of them all together um and uh you know it's a good there's a lot of real estate to work with so it's a little bit easier than doing like even like the, like the road wheels for the panzer three chassis so well, that's where no, this is the sorry th this is the first time where you i see that you've weathered the wheels off the model you usually put them on the model don't the, you depends yeah oh. so in this case it's the the running gear is fairly easy to get mm, at okay and i'm using frugal tracks i have those off so it just makes sense and i'll do the same thing i'll weather the the vehicle itself mm. with everything off of it mm -hmm. and i'll show some shortcuts that i take okay um that but that'll still the shortcuts that won't that won't hurt you at a show Mm -hmm. I think if, if you're serious about entering and whatnot, that mm -hmm. you know the judges aren't going to try and catch you on something. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk a little bit yeah. about that. But uh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, okay. just, just a ton of yeah. a, lot, a lot of 3D stuff, like a, a lot of 3D clamps. Um, and because of that, I, I took the opportunity to leave some of the tools off the kit. Yeah, because you got to get at the details. Yeah, so you can the see the clamps, handles, yeah, the clamps. And all that and whatnot. Um, I'll do something a little bit different with the like. There's a track tool cable on the side there. Mm -hmm. Uh, in another episode, I'll show you what I, you know, kind of, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a neat little trick I, I, I saw in a magazine somewhere that I want to replicate on this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, fun We're project. About that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, fun little project. Maybe I can well, take this opportunity little. to take a shout out to Chris, who I met at uh, 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 Wheels and Wings Hobbies yesterday uh, when we had uh, uh, Noah from uh, Scale Air, uh, Aircraft in Japan come over and talk about. Uh, Chris Sieber's uh, wonderful Tomcat uh, book. And so, yeah, I'm g giving a shout out. But at the same time, we had a couple of people come in and say, oh, you guys are still doing the video. We miss it. So I got to say that Dave and I do this on our own time, right? Yes. And I wish we did it a little more. But so my apologies, we can't be there every week. But no. We, we and, do what we can. Yeah. Right? And, and we're kind of at the end of summer. And yeah. summer, well, for me anyways, a yeah. little bit of vacation got in the way and yeah, other yeah, stuff yeah. and whatnot yeah. and in between projects. But I think now that... 
you know, I think we'll we'll get back to more of a regular, yeah, we'll, a little bit we'll more of our best. But but yeah, to Harvey's point, we do. I mean, kind of do the Sunday mornings in real time. Robert volunteers. You know, he we're all volunteering. We're, yeah. We have the easy part in front yes. of the camera. Robert has the difficult part. He He's is the big. Cut everything and He's put everything together and load it up to YouTube and all Rob's, that. So thank Robert's you, Robert. the glue, and he doesn't. Thank come you, in front thank of the, you. Yeah, there he is. He never shows his face in front of the camera. He's very modest. Yeah, yeah. no, and and you know, my time is I I'm a lot on Facebook, some on Instagram. You know, you know, you guys know where to find me. Um, so I just provide my time uh, here because I think it's fun so you know we'll, we'll try to get back on a regular schedule yeah. we, we never you ever notice that we never hit the like button do what other people do if you like us do it but we're not always going to keep saying that every video uh, if you like us sure go ahead yeah we're not, yeah, we're, we're, not, not we're not monetizing this we're thing. not monetizing it we we're do, not constantly yeah, we, do, we like doing it. we enjoy doing it and you know we love getting the, the, the thing that uh, I think we love the most is getting the positive feedback that's all so that's, that's all we want to for that keeps us going we, we enjoy yeah. that that's more yeah. than so I just needed to put that out there and so we're here and we'll keep going when we can great right. so we'll get yeah so we'll just uh, we'll, we'll switch the cameras and yep. we'll, we'll get uh, we'll get into the details on this okay so we're gonna start with uh, the first thing uh, so we'll work this kind of up in, in progression of, of layers um, and I'll try and uh, see if I can I need my eyes for this so this is so this is a finished road wheel uh, I don't know how how well you can see yeah, perfect. This. is that good yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you can see there's, uh, we're going to do a bunch of things. So we're going to start off with, with putting some acrylic mud on there. Uh, then uh, we're going to do a little bit of blending with some buff, uh, just airbrush and buff. And then we'll do, we'll do some washes and then some speckling. Um, and then we'll take, uh, because of the, you know, the road wheels have this, this metal uh, rim, uh, that rim would wear down and you, you would get bare metal show through in a lot of cases so we'll show you how we do that so this is a finish this is a finished road wheel here so this is one and this is the uh, uh, I believe this is this is an outer surface so this is a surface that will that you'll see behind it is a surface that you're not going to see so you need to give those surfaces some attention because of if you're well it depends what you're doing if you're entering it into a show um, especially if you're doing an amps thing they'll look at consistency of weathering so you want to make sure you get at least something on the inside but you don't want to spend a lot of time on it because it doesn't nobody's really going to see it right you're, you're going to see it from a bit of a distance or from underneath the vehicle or whatnot so there just has to be the illusion of something so you do need to pay some attention to it so we'll kind of i'll kind of show you what i do there but it's very very simple um so we'll use so I, again using uh my favorite um mud product right now which is AK's uh, Dark Earth. This is the diorama paste and I used Robert's trick of using the saran wrap to put over it to keep it fresh and it uh, really works. Like it doesn't, uh, this used to dry up regularly on me, I'd have to rehydrate with water that's, but that's fantastic. That's so a great, great idea. Great tip Robert, thank you for that. Thank um, you. And what I do is uh, I put, well so firstly when I use my water I put a little bit of dish soap in it to help break and you just need a drop to help break the surface tension. Um, and I just kind of mix that in there with a the brush. So that's all you need is just a drop of water. And then I'll wet, um, I'll wet the surface just a bit. And then we go in with the mud. So you'll pick some up with your brush. And what I what I do is I'll, I'll either um, you know, it's it's kind of six of one half does another. But let's say on this one, I'll I'll start from the center. So I'll put the mud in the center. And just make sure you get good coverage. Now this is a water soluble product, obviously. And then what I do is that I'll kind of unload the brush. And then what I'll do is I'll just start blending it out while it's still wet. Now this stuff dries relatively quick, like especially if you're used to working with enamels and oils. This stuff dries relatively quick, so you're going to move fairly quickly. Now once it's set, though, can you correct it or it's no, done? No, it's done. Mm. Yeah, there's no going back once it dries. And I just work. I just, you know, it's almost like you're using, like you're you're kind of mimicking what centripetal force would do. Mm. Where you create some nice streaking. You, you know what I, I've tried and, and seems to work? If you get the right consistency of whatever the weathering agent you're using, um, like perhaps you, you, you apply a light wash and let it puddle in the middle, and I actually 
post it on my little Dremel and I spin it at a slow speed. And it mimics the, the, oh, very the good. wheels. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it takes a bit of practice to get it right. But yeah. that's another These option. Don't, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, so you can see just very quickly, you get a nice mud effect. They get a good base. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, all, it looks almost, you know, some of you might look at this and say, well, that's, that's kind of good enough. Mm -hmm. But again, it's all about, yeah. it's all about layering. Um, and then, so what I'll, what I'll do is um, I'll pick another piece. So this is so this is the back end of it. So this is this is something you're that's going to be up against the hull. You're not going to see a whole lot of, but just for the sake of consistency, I just dab some mud on there and do the same thing. Blend it out, just so that you know it's not the base color, and that's it. Are you only using that one AK, whatever you call it? What's that? Dark? Dark Earth, yeah. Dark Earth. Yeah. Are you, are you going to use any other AK colors in that range, or is that it? That's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. yeah and really, you just need it for the texture. I mean, it yeah, helps yeah, that yeah. it's darker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, I, and that's why I, I like this, because I like the color of it. Yeah. More than anything. Yeah. Um, but it's more it's more for the tech. In this case, it's, well, it has to do with rolls. It's for the texture, and, mm. and it, it works the color, too. So you kind of kill two birds with one stone. Um, I have to say though, uh, when when I'm painting, so you saw the the tiger, which is here, which is fully modulated. So it's modulated in its base, you know, Dunkel Gel color. Uh, so it's got four colors on it. So it's got a shadow, a base, and a two highlight colors. On the wheels, um, I just do two or three colors. Like I'll never use the second highlight because you, you lose it anyways uh, okay. under under the weathering. Right, right, right. So I just give it, you know, and you can. This is an un this is kind of, you know, there's no mud on this. And it's just, I just put a little bit of a cloud pattern on it just to kind of give it some variation, uh, some tonal variation. So that's, that's really it. Um, so what, while that one's drying, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do this one. So we'll grab some more, grab some more mud. I would do, now we'll, I'll do this from the outside. I'll do it from outside in. And you, and you don't need a lot. Like this thing will last me until until retirement. Especially with this red wrap over it. Yeah, exactly. And you can vary uh, the amount of mud, obviously. Um, not everything was, you know, not everything would get the exact same amount of mud. So here, I'm just now I'm working in. So in the last wheel, I was working out from the center, from the hub. Now I'm just working in, and I'm, this is but it's the same principle. You're just kind of rotating the wheel in your hand. And the, and the other thing too is I don't mask the the, the wheels like when I'm painting them. <clears throat> I don't mask the rims. Yeah, you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, I actually tried that, uh, Dave, on one of my recent projects. The, um, the Simovante, yeah, and you're right. You don't have to go to all that attention. No, no not, what, not if you're putting. I mean, if you're if you're doing a very clean, yeah, maybe you do. Yeah, but I find that that once I apply a pin wash, the pin wash almost you know defines the edge for me, rather yeah. than working with a with a mask. Yeah. Not to say that the companies that make masks are no good, but it depends what you want. But you can't. You're right. You can do it without it. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, it just, it, and it's tedious, like, like, <laughs> like, road wheels are tedious enough, like, to mask them on top of everything. You know what's the worst? Panzer fours. Oh, yeah. Right? Tigers are much better. There's so many road wheels. I mm. forgot how many road wheels mm. there are the tigers. I wonder I haven't built any of them. So this one, so this one's got a, a slightly thicker application of mud, but that's okay. These things are going to vary. Mm. Let's grab another one out of the pile here. So let's take this. So this one will go back, and we'll let's do it from the center again, and we'll do we'll do a lighter application. How's it looking, Robert? Very good. Just want to make sure everybody can see what I'm doing here. Again, just you know, you're just pulling it to the outskirts. Or the out uh, the other edge of the wheel. Put a little bit more on there. Now 
And then while it's still wet, you can always go, like, if you want to, like, I might say, hey, this is a bit much. This is more than I was hoping for. Mm. Like, take, just take some off. How, how long would it take you with this process to do all of these wheels, let's say, in accumulated uh, uh, cumulative hours? Mm, good question. Probably, um, <clears throat> well, the ones I did, I did within the space of... An hour and a bit, so maybe, I don't know, four, four or five hours? Okay. The reason I ask is a lot of guys, you know, there's, there's so much bench time that they have, and man, how can you produce models so quickly, that kind of thing? <laughs> and so, um, you, you know, you build to your own speed, but at yeah. the same time, you know, you, you don't want to be so slow as then to, to start, you ever start something, you kind of lose interest because <laughs> it's taking so long. Oh, so my advice is just, happens. yeah, just do it. Just make it organic and just... Just yeah, and it. this type of thing is mindless. So, like, I'll have the yeah. TV on. Yeah. We're watching the, you know, Blue Jays or have. You mean lose? Well, they won last night, I think. <laughs> yeah. Just when you think they're out. Yeah. Then they win. They, they win. They're yeah. back in. So, I guess you guys on uh, on the, the channel know that we're from Toronto, so. But also, yeah, I'll have something on, or you know, like, yeah. or YouTube. Yeah, like, like I know you watch a lot of YouTube. No, I do. YouTube's great. Do. There's do. just so much, so much on there to watch. Um, now let's let's do the um, let's do the drive sprocket. So this this will require a little bit more attention because you would get a lot of mud that would just kind of build up in the middle. Uh, so I'll do a fairly heavy application. Now I seem to recall when I when I did my auto carious, I did it in seventy second. Um, yeah, I seem to recall that he, the crew had removed the front outer yes. wheel, right? The, yeah. Prevent mud buildup. Yes. Mm. So do your research, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, and, and with Tigers especially, like it was only yeah. 1,300 and change that were built, oh, okay. ever built. Uh -huh. So there's, uh, so if you're doing a specific Tiger. Right. And again, it depends what your, depends what your motivation is. Um, but I have pictures of this, this specific vehicle. Right, there you go. And it shows, yeah, like, there's yeah. damage to the front right. fender, and it shows damage to the front fender. It shows, like, the, the shovel, instead of being uh, face down, is face up. Um, so, it, and that's part of the fun. Yeah. Right, is, is yeah. kind of doing the research on the vehicle. So going back on, you remember the past episodes of my Sheridan, where I mentioned that one of the tracks on the other side was in reverse. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It's in a photo, so and I think if you if you uh, want to enter models like that, I strongly urge that you take that photo and you put it on the table with your notes. Yeah. Because otherwise, they'll say, well, the guy put it on wrong, and then you get dinged, and you you know. Yeah. Just do your research and make sure that if you are competing, we're not saying that you must. Make sure that you have that documentation. Yeah, agreed. I did, and it's funny, I, like I I, I did uh, like that mark on Spitfire. Yeah. And the fin flash was in the wrong order of colors. Right. Like instead yes. of instead of red, white, yes. blue, it was blue. And it was because the crew when they did it they yes. mistakenly. But that's there's documented evidence. Yes. It. Yes. So I mentioned that, you know, if somebody were to pick up on that and the aircraft judges are fairly are fairly uh, eagle eyed and that type of thing. They can be. Yeah. So you just want to get some good coverage. And I might I might go back in here with some thicker mud. Because you would get a bunch of buildup. Yeah, I've noticed that you really have picked up on that acrylic uh, AK paste. Uh, I've noticed. I, I still need to get more into that product. Yeah, it's uh and it's you know, I yeah. watching uh, yeah. uh Martin Kovacs do it on night shift. See, I, I'm a bit old school and I, mean, I I mix some of my paints with plaster of Paris still, you know, to get that texture. I'm thinking, wait a minute, I can buy the stuff now. Well, that's a great, that's a great point because let's face it, today's weathering pro like you could do, like, like people were doing this stuff back in the yeah. late seventies and eighties, nineties yes, before all this stuff really came out. And, and, and you can still, this is all convenience. It is. You, you know, we were, we were talking uh, yesterday at, at the Wheels and Wings event for, for uh, uh, Chris's book. Um, we were talking about weathering and, uh, you know, there's, there's a thing that I often mention that um, weathering seems to be second nature to, in particular, and this is controversial, to, to armor guys. They, they, they get it. They know it. Um, but I think some, sometimes with the aircraft guys, they'll um, 
some like dirty aircraft, some don't. Uh, and I think a lot of it behind the scenes could also be, um, think of it, walking in uh, the intimidation factor when you look at all these mud products out there, all these weathering products, where do I start, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and it's, it's basically rolling up your sleeves and going in there and just using all these products. Right, and if people are not comfortable with a product, but you start by doing. You have to, and you know you need you need to begin thinking about how you want to replicate the reality of a vehicle. If it's dirty, weather it. If yeah. it's not, don't. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty simple, yeah. right? I don't think it's a matter of it's 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 too dirty or it's too clean. Just make it clean. If it was a clean aircraft, like I'll use an example, uh, A six M twos at Pearl Harbor, they're pretty clean. But A6M3s on the islands of the Pacific or Cactus Air Force, they were pretty dirty. So yeah. I don't think there's anything where we got to be subtle with, you know, aircraft. Well, it depends on the operational situation. Yeah. Pretty pretty simple. Well, I, I think for every, and, and, you're, and you're right, I think photo, photographic evidence is that's the, best, the best guide on that's that. That's the best. And I think for every, for every picture of a very clean aircraft, you can find a picture of a very dirty one. Yeah, I was at... Um, uh, CFB Trenton, Canadian Forces Base Trenton, and uh, was on the tarmac looking at a at a F-18, uh, and it was dirty. You just go right up to it, and it, it it's in service, and it was dirty. You could see oil everywhere, splatters yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It from far away it looks clean, but when you're standing six feet away, it's dirty. You yeah. you could see it. So. So you can see. So I finished the, the finished the drive rocket. So I, again, I went fairly just like I did on this. I went fairly heavy on the mud on the kind of the middle of uh, the interior of it, uh, and then kind of worked it off the the main the main hub. Uh, oh, I forgot to do the back. So I want to make sure you pay attention to the back. Um, but again, it's just you know I could you get very comfortable doing this, and and you know to, to your point, Harvey, it's just just start by starting. Yeah, yeah. Like there's, yeah. there's no, there's like, like I, I think, I think I mentioned this on a previous thing. It takes. It's practice. Yeah, it takes a hundred hours to get good at something. It yeah. takes two thousand hours to get to become a, a map to master it. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, right? I'm doing figures now, and I'm taking my time because figures, it, it's, it, although I started in figures, like you know. <laughs> You're brave. It's, it's, I gotta it's, do figures. I got, yeah, but I, I it's, I gotta take time to hone it. I'm comfortable with every other subject. Um, the only two I think I need to work on are gloss finishes on cars and figures. Those are my last two frontiers. Um, so both very daunting. Ugh. Yeah, I mean we don't. I, I, unfortunately, we should do more car models. I get it, um, but since I'm still working on my techniques for gloss finishes, there's a bunch of other models that are way better than me on that. So once I hone it, we'll do some cars. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah cars. Cars are a different animal yeah. together. So, um, so that's so that's it. So we we've done a few uh, of the road wheels. So I've got some other ones that I did yesterday that are, that have the mud on it. So what I'm going to do now is we'll get the airbrush set up, and I'm just going to spray a little bit of buff. Yeah. And the reason for that is really kind of twofold. So one, and I've mentioned this before, is this product as great as it is, the texture bits are these little, I guess these little crystal. Uh, things that they put in there and, and every now and again it catches yeah. light and it kind of sparkles just, yeah so that yeah. so the buff will, will map that down and it also yeah. does a nice job of blending it in so why are you well we'll get into it later but why wouldn't you just use a clear coat or do you prefer buff to get a little bit more Well, because you because in the in this particular situation um the mud is a little bit drier ah, okay. the condition of the kursk at the time so the so buff you, the buff serves two purposes it got flattens it, it out got and it. it also lightens lightens it up because I can see right now, I can see your model nearer to me off camera in the wheels. There's definitely a patina to those wheels that does not exist on your hull right now. Mm -hmm. it, you can see it. Yeah. 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 It's a nice patina. Yeah. Yeah. And you would have different, yeah. like, like uh, I, I think a model that has different sheens to it. Yeah. Like even an aircraft model, like, like the weathered aircraft model, has different sheens to it. I think that. Oh, absolutely. That's part of the. Right. You hit it on the nail. A lot of a lot of uh, modelers think, well, that's that's a gloss spot, but you can use that to your advantage. And I'm thinking fuel stains, yeah, gas or, or stains. Yeah, panel panel even. Yeah. So use gloss and matte to your to yeah. your advantage. Yeah, I think that's another yeah. layer, yeah. right? Of kind of kind of getting that that yeah. modulation or different differentiation. So, okay. So let me uh, we'll cut for a bit, and we'll get right back on the, with with the airbrush. 
Okay, so I've got my airbrush loaded with some Tamiya Buff. So I'm using the uh, the acrylic line. Normally I love the uh, the lacquer paints, but because uh, the acrylic's fine here, and I don't want to spray in a, you know, we're not, I don't have my booth or mask. I don't want to I don't want to kill Harvey and 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 uh, Robert here. So um, we're just using, and I just use some X20 thinner, X28 thinner uh, for this, and it's a pretty thin mix. It's probably 70% thinner, 30% paint, I would say. And what I do is I just kind of, you just, sorry, let me see, make sure, is it, can you see this okay, Ron? Yeah, yeah, it's okay, yeah. So I'm just kind of very lightly, just kind of drying things out, and that's all you need. Are you doing the, the black rim, the rubber rim too? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't spray it, but if it gets a little bit of overspray, ah. well, that's okay. Oh, so you're not covering the whole thing. No, no, completely. just the, just, just the, the, yeah, got it. right. And then I'll do the back as well. Just so that things are consistent. Uh, so here's here's one that we just this is one of the ones we did on camera. So that's a lighter one. Yeah, you don't want to cover it. Yeah, because you, you want to leave some semblance of the yeah. of the dunkel gel underneath. Yeah. Right. That's all you need to do. I'll do the back here as well. The nice thing about working with the acrylics is they dry very quickly. So this is like real time. This is maybe ten minutes has passed, but everything's dry and you can spray. You can spray over it. And the nice part is that because the next step is the wash, the enamel wash, you know, you can kind of move on to this fairly quickly. So you can really speed through this once you once you get going. This one has a, this one has more mud on it. So you can see it just all it does is just kind of lightens the mud a bit, dries it out, as it were. Cuts it back. Let's see, is there a back on Again, you don't spend a lot of time on the, kind of the, this, I will call this like an A surface, because you can see it, this is kind of like a B surface behind the thing, behind the scenes, you're not gonna see it. And you can go a little bit heavier on some, a little bit lighter on others. And it, it, you can see, I don't know, like I just, as I was picking this up, you can see the glitter on this. As I, I don't, I don't know if it's, I don't know if you'll see it on the, but I, I see it here. So, again, because this is matte, this will take care of all that. Glitter. I'm gonna do the back on that. Do this guy next. And you're just giving it a light dusting, and see, so it might go heavier on some, lighter on others. All right, that's all you need to do. And this is the idler wheel, same thing. And then I'll do the back. Again, you're just kind of cutting back. And again, it's important to kind of think about, you know, where your vehicle is situated, the time period, the battle it took place in, the terrain it was fighting in. You know, Dave talked about that with his, uh, when we had him on for Sherman's. Um, yeah, it was an important consideration. It adds, it adds a level of realism to the model, right? You got to kind of situate it. So I went very light on that last one. And it's nice because it, some of the there are some hard streaks from yeah, the yeah. from the acrylic mud, and this kind of softens it a bit. I also do like to add variation to some road wheels um, that I don't do the same as on all of them. Do you know what I mean? Like a little more splatter on one wheel, yeah, a little yeah, yeah. more. Yeah, exactly. So you got a little more interest. I said before the success of a model is how long you hold the viewer's eye to it. Yes. You got a, you've got people looking at your model for like twenty minutes. You got you're succeeding. You get a pass over, but I'll be looking at it for a minute. Well, maybe you need to do more storytelling. Yeah, exactly. Totally right. That's all, well, and that's what it is. I mean, that's the sign. You're doing something right if, if somebody's at a show, somebody's lingering on the model, looking at it. Somebody just kind of looks at it like that. Yeah. 
And they yeah. don't see anything, you know, that doesn't it, catch yeah. their, their, you know, that, that says something. Right. Add a colorful box like you do. Add a little, like I like those uh, posters where you add a single magazine yeah. tucked in a couple, detail. you know what I mean? Like that, uh, that half track I did. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do enough of that. Right, right. Well, you could go back. I could go it. back and do that. Exactly yeah. right. So again, just a bit. You just just a hint, because because if, if you do too much, you lose. True. You, you yeah, lose cover. The yes, you cover. I think one of the one of the hardest things for me, and I admit, is I do all this modulation. And go, oh man, I, I'm I'm covering it, and I got to go back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's very easy to over, over uh, cover it because the weathering will itself tone it down. Yeah, and that's why like like I I'm happy where the tiger is because you can like it's very stark. Yeah. The modulation is very stark. It's very contrasty, and that's what you want. It's almost like it's uncomfortably contrasty. Right. And, and, and that, that, that's what you need. Because, I've learned from you because yeah. it's going to tone everything down. You have to have right? that contrast. Yeah. And it's easy. Um, it's easy to tone it down. It's a lot harder. Not impossible, but a lot harder to bring it. You're back. very good. Yes, yeah, right? true. Very right. good. Yep. So that's it. So that's all. So I just spent. I just you know just a light dusting. That's like fifteen minutes. Not even. So. Yeah, that's like like five minutes. Yeah. Doing this part. Um. Let me just finish this little bit here again, just a little bit, just to kind of cut back the mud. And this will be the same thing we'll, we'll do on the vehicle itself. Maybe for the next session, um, I hope to get camo on it, and then I'll, I'll maybe I'll do one side yep. of the vehicle, and then we'll do the other side on camera together. But this uh, vehicle did it have camo on the wheels. No, mm. no. By the way, dumb question: Did tigers have camo on the wheels? Yes, some did. Same, same, like same thing with even like Panzer threes and fours. Some some of the wheels were camo, some they weren't. So again, specific vehicles, right? Okay, so that's it for that's it for this. So. We're done with the airbrushing, so I'm going to salvage this. I'm going to put this back in here. By the way, while you're cleaning up, um, I've had a couple of questions of people because they know I like to build Japanese subjects. And the, the new tiger that's out in Japanese markings, is it real? And I said... Well, the way they presented it, it is not. Uh, the scheme is incorrect. They went to go see it. They never bought yeah, it back. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. You can see pictures of Japanese officers standing on them in the in the uh, in the turret, um, but they never repainted them, and uh, they were never in that color scheme. So yeah. you know, it's just what if? Just to set the record straight. But it would be so cool, as I talked earlier. Can you imagine if there was a tiger on Tarwa? Oh my. Yeah, I, what, whether they would get stuck in the sand or whatever, but that would be... But like having a gun. Probably be a... Yeah, the EDE. That would do some damage. Well, they, like they said, what happens if the Germans had uh, A6M20 at the Battle of Britain, right? Yeah, with, with the, the range, range. The range of... Well, all they had to do was put a drop tank on the 109s. <laughs> yeah. Like, guys, how hard? Come on. Yeah. Good thing they didn't. Um... So that's it. So now we're gonna now we're gonna get to uh, the wash part, um, which is simply. Actually, we can probably just keep keep rolling. It's a very easy setup. So I use uh, again a matter of convenience. I, I'll use the Mig, uh, you know, uh, one thousand eight dark wash, uh, and just some odorless thinner, uh, and we can start mixing this up. And this is really kind of the last, the last piece that we need to do. And what I'll do is I'll take some, get it into my dish. Don't need a lot. That's enough. Um, and then we'll get some, we'll get some enamel thinner. We'll use one of these pipettes. Don't need a lot. Uh, close that up. Always close up your bottles because yes. hands fly. Right? Yes. Um, and then you get your brushes. Uh, and then you get your, your... Let me use this for the 
So we're going to do two things here. So we're going to do a wash and then we're going to do some speckling. Um, so pick this. So again, I just sprayed this, but because this is enamel and we were working with acrylics before, uh, it's fairly safe. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I'm just going to accentuate the bolt detail and maybe the hub detail on this. So I'm just going to wet this just so that the wash carries a little bit better. And then you're just touching, well, it's a bit much, you have to go back and clean it up, but you're just touching the bolts. It's a bit heavy. You can go back and that's the nice thing about this, you can go back and clean it up. And you have lots of, you have a lot more time with this than you do with, than I have with the acrylic mud. And then let's see if we can just get some definition around the hub itself. Like so. There you go. And I'll just maybe clean that off a bit. And then you can also use it to, um, if you wanted to do some, like if I want to accentuate, maybe I want to accentuate some of the mud here. I can just add a bit of wash just to darken it. Like so. And I'm going to just do it on this part of the road wheel. Mm -hmm. right? Looks good. Yeah. So we can set that aside and go on to the next one. So it's very simple. Like this is a very easy, simple process. And you know, for the, for this, for the age, like the detail, it's pretty. It's still pretty good. Oh yeah, I mean, Tamiya, you can't go wrong with Tamiya. But think of it when you when you put this on the table and people are looking at it, would they know it's not because <clears throat> you've applied your artistic skill? It doesn't matter if. Do you know what I mean? But the whole model then becomes the piece, not oh, it's an older kit. <laughs> well, it depends what you. Yeah, to your point, it depends, it depends what you do, what with, you it. do with it. Yeah, and there's a lot of aftermarket on here. And, yeah, and, and so yeah, I think people will look at it and they would say, hey, this is like a rye field or yeah, right. Right. The border models or something, right? A dragon kit. Yep. But no, it's the old Tamiya kit. I get why I get why some people just build Tamiya. They are dependable. I might do the same thing here just to accentuate some of the mud down here. And then and then the, the wash is kind of spilling over onto the outside. So again, to Harvey's earlier point, you can use a wash to kind of recreate that definition of the, the separation between the road wheel uh, and the uh, and the rubber rim. And so we'll let that dry and move on. So again, very very quick. There's a lot of road wheels to work with, but doing this helps. Like it just speeds things along. So I'm just going to again create that definition. And you don't have to be terribly precise because it, there's a lot, I mean, it's a fairly organic environment, I guess, I would say, because of all of the mud and weathering that's on it. So you don't have to be terribly precise, which is nice. And then here, I'm not going to do too much because this is one of the lighter, so this is probably all I'm going to do on this road wheel. So again, the the previous layer of mud kind of creates a bit of a map for subsequent weathering applications. This one will go a little bit thicker because there's a bit more mud, especially on the hub. We'll create that definition. So you're just, you're just kind of touching the edge of it and you're just letting capillary action kind of pull it around the detail. Uh, let's do a little bit, I don't know, maybe I'll just darken. And uh, with this, it, it'll always look more stark when it's wet. So as this dries out, mm. this will, this will, 
lighten up significantly. This guy's gonna get some attention. Yeah, you know, as, as I was building the kit, I was really impressed with the detail for the vintage of the kit. And here you might want to, so here I'm going to, I'm going to just create some additional streaks using the wash. You can kind of darken things out a bit. And then maybe go back and clean some of it up. And if you wanted to get, you know, you could you could get some some oils and work oils into this too. Mm -hmm. Right, you can absolutely do that. We've talked about this before, but I think you've you've reached the level of of a craftsman when you know when to stop and when you know what is yeah. too heavy, what's too light, and what. There's no secret to that. You, it's your eye. Yeah. You, there, there's, it's experience. It's it comes experience. from doing. Yeah. It. it comes. It comes from yeah. getting to that first hundred hours and yeah. mastering it. That yeah. you know. I've overdone it. I've underdone it. So practice. Like. Like the greats in their fields, whether it's sports or business, the arts, whatever. They got great by just doing a lot of stuff, right? Like yeah, the, yeah, you know, I. Putting I, the sweat equity in. I have seen some. Modelers, obviously, we won't mention names. This is my own personal opinion. I think some of them are 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 thinking, I must apply a wash. I must do dry brush. I must do a filter. I must do. To me, it's it's organic. You have to do every step, otherwise, it looks too busy or it doesn't look natural. Like when you play a game of sports, you're not thinking about my right hand is going to do this, my left hand. You just do it. So well, that's when that's right? when you're at your best. Right? Just don't, when, you, when you think. Don't, when you think too much, it's like it, it's, it doesn't come out right. Exactly. And I've seen a couple of guys who are they're, they're really experienced modelers, and then they, they overthink it, and it looks too... Paralysis by analysis. It, yeah, yes. Yes, paralysis by analysis. It, it, it doesn't look right. You don't have to add every weathering technique to a model. No, like I'm, I'm working on a, like I'm working another stug offline, yeah. um, and I completely forgot to apply a filter. But I look at it now. Yeah, <laughs> don't really need it. And like maybe it. maybe I go over some panels sure. just sure. to create a bit of variation. Sure. But it doesn't really need it. So yeah, you're right. I just don't overthink it. And when you're not thinking and you're just doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and that, that's where like, again, again, it all comes back to the experience. Because like, with the experience, your your eye will learn what looks good. That's it. And the eye tells you. Yeah, and, and and to your point, it's I think it's very, it's very pertinent. Um, it's knowing what to stop. Yeah, you can have a million techniques under yeah. your belt. Like, like the journey there. Yeah. Is not. It, it's interesting, but it's the destination and knowing mm -hmm. what the right destination mm -hmm. is, right? And it just comes from experience. You just gotta, you just gotta, yeah. you know. So if if you're you know, I, I know, you know, I, I, some of the shows I speak with some modelers and they're intimidated about, you know, because they, they, to your point, there's so much selection. Where do you start? How do where you do you start? It? Just, yep. just start. Yep. Just, just start. Know, get up I've all even, the wash. I've, I've even had some of my very close uh, aircraft guys who, who like, they win every time. And 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 one of them mentioned, I am I am intimidated by weathering. I said, really? You? And and said, yeah, show me the weathering techniques, Harvey. I says, well, you, you catch on. Uh, but I think they, they sometimes there's a formula that they enjoy, and it you know it's it's pristine work and it yeah, works. and you can start with the formula absolutely. Um, but, but then you know step it up, put a little mud on the wheels and work from there. Yeah, um, what looks right? I think sometimes it's a comfort level for some of these guys. Yeah. And hey, believe me, I mean I wasn't like this. Like if if I make this look easy. Plus, you've been you've been honing it right now. You know, I'm I'm not going to show you a video of my figure painting. Not now. <laughs> I will later. I'm getting there, uh, but not quite. Not to my eye. Let's add some, maybe just some streaks, just some interest. Right, but that's you know, you have to do much more than that. I 
think you're almost like we're almost done. These ones, I think, I'm not sure which one is the outer surface, so we'll do both. But here there's a lot more bolt detail. So what we're doing here is we're just creating some... So this isn't like a grease stain. This is just creating accentu accentuating the details, making them pop out a bit. We'll do we'll do grease grease stains as the last one. But you, again, you want to be sparing with that. Not every road wheel is going to have a grease stain on it. That's what I mentioned before. Let's let's vary it up. Yeah. Yeah, vary it up. And believe me, I love grease stains. You do like grease stains, don't you? I do. I've seen you apply it to your models, and it, and it works. It really works. Or like a wet stain. Like, there'll be a wet stain. On, well, maybe not a wet stain, because the terrain was very... What, what, what is your thoughts on, on like, water stain? Like, after, like a lot of guys... I, I'm thinking, if, if it rains on a vehicle, have you ever tried that? Like, after a, a rain-soaked a eastern front... That's where you're using gloss. I mean, that would be interesting could, yeah. to, without making it look like you know blue stains. And, and it's funny, like you look at some, you look at some pictures, and you see uh, vehicles that have been like whitewashed. Yeah. Like the whitewash is very heavy-handed. Yeah. It looks horrible. Like if if you replicated that on a model. Yeah. Like it, it, people might look at it and say, "Gee, that like a child painted that." I think it's better to go lighter. Less is best. Yeah. So sometimes, but but and sometimes you see like you know rain marks and the rain marks look very heavy handed. Yeah. Yeah. And it you know so it doesn't sometimes even though it's it's real and you see it on vehicles it doesn't look. No. No. I mean, part of the art of modeling is to accentuate some things artificially. So yeah. Because of the scale, right? Exactly. I mean, really, even back to aircraft, it, you know, can you see panel lines 72 feet away from an aircraft? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's always that debate. Well, I can't quite see them. <laughs> We'll talk about, a, I'm working on a, on a dyna, which we'll have in a future episode, uh, where I'm going to show you how to build the vintage Airfix kit. And uh, I actually sanded off all the panel lights. And I'll let you be the judge if that works or not, because let's see how it goes. I, these seen, are all raised panel lines, yeah? Yeah, they were all raised. And I thought, well, why would I rescribe them? So let's try to just get them all off. Well, that'll be in an upcoming episode. So stay tuned. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. So again, the, the secret here is just to be very light with the application. Vary it up. That's it. No, maybe we'll do the... Uh, There's a lot of detail here, so I'm gonna wet this. I so not I didn't wet all of them, but I'll wet this one because there's a lot of detail. The nice thing about tigers is that there's generally a picture somewhere of the vehicle you're doing, or at least a picture of one in the same mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. or same unit. And don't forget to don't forget to pay attention to the rear of it. Not that you'll see the rear of it really at all, but good practice. Like again, talking about you know if you're worried about damaging or, or wrecking the model. Like there's 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 great opportunities to do practice on a you know like the underside and you yeah. know, talk about doing the, the underside of the of the model. Um you know kind of the, the other side of you know some of the the back side of the road wheels that are up against the hull. Nobody's gonna see those. Mm -hmm. So you can practice on those. You can use those as practice surfaces.
But this is the perfect type of thing to do with you know, maybe some music on or YouTube in the background. Game on. Yeah, that's what I do. I, I watch uh, YouTube when I model quite a bit. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. There's lots. Sometimes it'll just be music and sometimes it'll be, yep. you know, historical documentaries or seminars. Like, I, you know, I'll watch, I'll watch Night Shift while I'm modeling. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Always something to learn there. Like, we're, we're hoping that our videos can be that type of companion for you when you model. Like, we're not, <laughs> you know, we're not, we, we, as you can see, our videos, while Robert edits here and there, um, our gab and our conversation is not rehearsed. No, it's all, yeah. It's, it's all, we try to do our best just to keep rolling. I mean, we might have some speaking points that we want to ensure we get across, but yeah. beyond that. Yeah. But we don't, we don't tend to, uh, let's take this, this speaking segment out or let's re should we, uh, in fact, Dave, I don't, I don't think Robert, I don't think we've ever reshot a speaking session. We just... Let's go and we go, and we'll do. We'll just do it right there. The only editing is where where we'll insert that that segment. So, I, a lot of it is gab, but I have heard from our viewers that they like the gab. So we're hoping that you enjoy our gab. Gabbing's good. I like gab. I'm gonna talk about this stuff all day. Yeah, Dave, you have too many models. I'm looking at your. You have too many. You know. Too many. Yeah, I know. Like, this is your problem. You have too many. But you always want more. I only have five. No, you don't. I'm a liar. Add a couple of zeros after that. I meant I meant like number of zeros, not E672 zeros. Oh, Although I, see. I have quite a few zeros zeros. You probably have as many zeros as I have tigers. <laughs> yes. But I do all scales, so that's my problem. That's good though. Yeah. Because I, I, I think going up and down the scales, as it were. Yeah. And a little bit more wash here. Makes you a better model. It does. It does. Although my focus, as people know, is Italian and Japanese. I really got to venture into uh, figures. People ask me about RAF. I have no idea. <laughs> the colors of a Spitfire isn't that bad. Right? No idea. Well, there's, there's, there's something to be said yeah. about specializing. Yeah. Like Jerry specializes in ballad and yes, one yes. lines, right? And so, and as as you may recall, when I had uh, built the one thirty second Mustang for uh, General Romer, I needed a lot of help. Yeah, not not a not a topic you were. No, doing. no, but then I got a lot of help from the pilot too. So yeah, uh, I was grateful for that. For yeah, the generals uh, confidence on the horse's mouth, as it were. Right That's from the, the pilot yeah. horse's mouth. Yeah, doesn't get doesn't get better than that. Yeah, That's the other thing about references, right? Um, when I interviewed General Romer about the Mustang, he was adamant several times in the interview that he there was D-Day mark, uh, wing markings, ID markings around the whole wing. Yet when you know you look on web and some discussion groups, the guys are saying, nope, nope, that squadron never had them. Well, he told me that his aircraft was never photographed nor filmed. Um, but he said, nope, clear as day, they surrounded the whole wings. So I heard it from the, from the horse's mouth, so to speak, and that's what I did. Mm. A photo or talk to the pilot if they are still around. Photo's the best. Yeah. Undisputable. Yep. So I'm not going to spend, you know, so you can see I'm kind of rushing through this, but because you're not going to see really a lot of this. Or any of it. And then we'll wrap up. Now the next thing we'll do is we'll do some speckling. So let's uh This one's messy. So, what I like to do is let's take this guy. So I'll load up, and maybe I'll use a bigger brush. Take a little bit more wash. 
brush. And then I'll kind of practice. Perfect. And then what I do is I just take the toothpick, a brush loaded with the uh, with the wash, and then that's it. That's it. That's all you're gonna do on this one. And you might not speckle every single one. Yes, mm -hmm. right. You have some variation. Yeah, like this yeah. one I might speckle. Yeah. Oops. Variation is good. Variation is good. That's done. And maybe this guy. And then, and then, like for example, maybe maybe I went overboard on a couple of these guys. You can just clean them up. And we can go back. There we go. Perfect. This guy here. Guy up here. And it just adds a little bit of visual interest. And this guy here. Let's do this drive sprocket. No spec, no chip is too small. There we go. That's good. And that's it. And the last thing for today um, is uh, we'll do a grease stain. So what I like to use is ah. I use this fresh engine oil, which is just really a glossy product. The oil brusher. Yeah. I love those products, by the way. Yeah, they're convenient. Yeah, they are. So I'll just... They have a good shelf life, too, I noticed. Yeah. So this is just kind of like tinted gloss, I guess, more than anything. So you can make your own. I mean, you can, all of this stuff you can do on your own. So if I want to do it, let's, let's pick, um, let's pick this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the area just, and the only reason I'm doing that is just to, just to improve the flow. And then I'll pick up some of this and just create, but very subtle. Yep. And this will, and this will dry, this will dry glossy. So it'll have a different, you know, different patina to it as it were. And that's it. There you go. So very simple and very quick. Um, and you can get some really nice, realistic looking road wheels. Um, and, you know, again, the Tiger has a lot of them, but you can use these on Panzer threes. You can use these on Shermans, same type of thing. Um, so okay. Now the last thing to do is just um, some of the, there are exposed rims on the road wheel that uh, would have some wear and tear so that like, they would they would be kind of scraped down to the bare metal. So all I do is I just take an old pencil and I just catch the rim like so and that's it. I got some on the rubber part, so you rub that off with your finger. But you can see, and it doesn't, and you don't want to be too stark about because, like, if I painted it in bright silver, it just ended up yeah, right, yeah, yeah. be too much. And then, and then you have a slightly thicker exposed rim on the back. So I'll do this. Have you tried the uh, powders that you know they have lead powders out now? By EK. I mean, that's essentially it, it pencil. Is. It's the same, it's but a, I, I find the nice thing about using a pencil is yes. this, this is the applicator as well. Right, right, right. Right? But yes, right. you could use... You could use those powders, yeah. Okay. 
Now again, this is this is you won't see this surface, so it's a great it's a great one to practice on. So you're asking if you're not going to see it, well, why do it? Well, yeah, you know, you, might, there might be a point there. The other the other thing that I I it usually it's great do to practice is on. when when you put the road wheels on, make sure that where the wheels contact the tracks, you want a bit of yeah. Right, you're not gonna you're not gonna keep it a little more cleaner. And then what I do is I'll take a Q-tip and just buff it. No, I didn't buff I didn't buff the other one because it's a very narrow. This is a little bit wider. Just just a note on Q-tips. Um, for our um, a Canadian American audience or even Europe. Um, Q-tips uh, are now made. The, the the shaft is made from paper or wood now. If you if you have the older Q-tips that are made of of plastic, uh, I was talking to John Wong about this. He gave me this tip. Oh, they're Save hollow. those. Yeah. They're hollow. Yeah, so you can... when you stretch them, when yeah. you right yeah, yeah. like over a candle, guess what? They are terrific pedal tubes. Uh, so don't throw them out and um, keep those because they don't make them anymore. Now sometimes, so the the problem with the regular Q-tips is that they yes they, they kind of they fluff out or yeah whatever. exactly. So I'll use so these I got at a oh yes at a Japanese o market. Oh Momo, the, yeah yeah Momo yeah. right or Momo yeah, yeah, yeah. Momo oh, Momo. Oh, Momo. So I use these. So these are very tiny, but this is the same the same type of quality you can get like buying the Tamiya. But they're tighter, right? The, they're the, very the, tight. The so they're they're good for whatever the cotton for, is tighter. Yeah, they're good for the other surface. So again, you can just buff it out. Just to get more of a sheen on it. Do you do what I do? I go into like hardware stores, beauty salons, looking for stuff for models. I, d I don't know what I'm looking for, but I'll know when I find yes, it. Yes, exactly. Best place to get things like drill bits is jewelry stores, like jewelers' files, pin vices. Yeah. The the best pin vice I have is a micro one that I got off my like a watchmaker. I bought it off him. Yeah. John Wong has one too. Yeah. Yeah, good point. They're, they're very fine tools, right? And uh, get those dental bits from your dentist, if because yeah. they'll just toss them. Yeah. They'll sterilize them and they'll give you the dental bits. Yeah. They'll cut through plastic. Yeah, no perfect problem. for that. So that's it. So just you know, so you kind of do the same thing with all of the other road wheels, but it's uh, you can see it's a very quick, easy way of getting some good weathering, and they look they look yeah. great, and that's something that's going to hold the eye on the model, right? So. Uh, for next time, we'll continue. I'll continue working on this uh, off uh, off camera. I'll do the green camo, and then we'll start. We'll start doing the weathering process. We'll do that together. Excellent. Okay. Well, that's it for uh, that's it for today. Thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks, Harvey. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see everybody next time around. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.